Good morning, or actually I should say good afternoon. Um, usually I wait for two people to join the live, but we have three so I can go ahead and start. Um, <clears throat> I want to pin a comment that basically says if you get kicked off the live, I don't know how to pin this comment. If you get uh, kicked off the live, excuse me, you can just um, rejoin. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> So, I've been doing um, a bunch of lives and none of them have anything really to do with clothing, nothing at all. I've been using my platform um, to kind of talk about some personal stuff that I've been going through. Actually, more than personal since it's trickled into my business <clears throat> where a group of people have decided to, not decided, they've taken a contract to <clears throat> destroy my life and so of course destroy my business um people that have decided to come together to target me people that plot against me <clears throat> people that spread malicious rumors about me people that try to make it seem like i have issues with other people other boutiques etc um and so that's what i've been dealing with for actively and aggressively for a year but even from before that it's been very evident that that's what i've been going through so these are what my lives are about um one thing is very clear i recognize that the people that log into my lives and the people that follow me are all part in an extension of that group so i realize that i'm talking to gang stalkers and i feel like i should put that out there just in case because I know people don't have access to me and they feel like well you know they can get some access if I'm on a live and they could oh my god your story I'm so sorry this is happening to you blah 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 it's all right I'm good so I realize that the people that I'm addressing that I'm talking to that I'm listening that are listening to me although I am being polite I am not illusioned to think that um, people are here for my, my, my better good. So it is what it is. Um, I usually put descriptions of these videos on my YouTube. I put descriptions in the captions of the videos so you can kind of tell what most videos are about. Um, and then I put a link in my stories as well. <clears throat> so people can always check out like what it's about. So today, what I wanted to talk about, first of all, it is such a relief that I can finally express my personal beliefs publicly. I used to feel like whenever I saw other people, you know, Christian Christianity in this country is mainstream. So whenever I used to see other people that used to talk about like something other than Christianity, so Allah or, you know, if it's Hinduism that they practice, whatever it was, it was always like, wow, like their religion is so mainstream that they can publicly appear as themselves. And I have my own particular beliefs that are very real to me. And it's like, it's like I used to always have to refer to God as a man, as a masculine figure. And I do believe that there is God the Father as well. But in my particular belief system, you know, I cleave closer to um, God as being a woman. So I believe in both. <clears throat> so it's been, it's like I've been creeping onto it, I want to say for the, the bulk of this year, but it's kind of like almost felt like a betrayal that I can't just say, you know, thank you, mother. Like people would say, thank you, father God. Like I couldn't say that because it's like, God really has carried me through. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know why my throat's doing this. It was fine just a second ago. 
yeah, God has really carried me through this entire situation that I've been through. And if anybody wants to kind of see what I'm talking about when I say the situation that I've been through, I've been through hell and back. I've been gang stalked. Um, if you go to my YouTube, which I will, um, I will tag in the stories. Actually, I probably should pin it in these, these comments. But anyway, um, if you check out my YouTube, you will see what it is like being gang stalked. You will see the events that happen to you i think that people don't know a lot i i don't know but i don't think they know all collectively what happens maybe they do because like i said there's a telegram group and i they definitely i definitely believe they discuss people in the telegram and whatever and i and i i have my reasons why i believe that people have come around and have said things to me um but you know, outside of the Telegram group, I don't know if they're being completely honest with people. No, I know they're not being completely honest with people about what they do. Because a lot of things, I think when people were having questions about, like, why have I not gone down yet? Why have I not forcefully joined yet? They started saying it's because I'm a dark witch. And then when they had things that they were doing to people and karma was coming back, they were saying that I was the one that was doing it. In the last video that I did, was it the last video? In one of the videos that I posted recently, I talked about how essentially it's like, I don't know if you guys know what a cloche is. A cloche is, but whenever you see bakers have like a platter that they put a, a cake on, they put a glass dome over top of the cake to protect it. That's called a cloche. It's clear, it's glass, and it just goes over the cake. And... I gave the analogy that what had happened was people were under a dome or a cloche where their own energy was being projected back to them. And those were the things, the attacks that they were sending to me. And I was being shielded from those things. And that is why every single time that people were told I was going to be bankrupt, I was going to be sick. I was going to be this or that or the third. It never happened. Lesions that I was supposed to get on my skin never happened. Illnesses never. Ha I never so once as went to the hospital once. But the people working against me have. I've never so much. I one time had a halfway cold. It came. It on. It, it. I kind of had the onset in one day. And one of my eyes got bloodshot. That's how much work they were doing on me. One of my eyes got bloodshot. And then I ended up going to my store the next day. And it was the weirdest cold because it was like it was in and out. It wasn't real. It wasn't like a, a real cold. Let me go off it. Let me go ahead and turn. Oh, you, Rachel, I'm going to actually block you because you're up. Bye, Rachel. Rachel's gone. And let's go ahead and turn off the, the comments. Let's go ahead and moderate the comments. I don't like when people come in with the triggering and the nonsense. We're here to listen. We're not here to participate. We're not here to be stupid. Anyway, so <clears throat> I remember I went to the store and it was like, I was, my eye was bloodshot. And it was like, sometimes I was good and sometimes I was coughing. Sometimes I was sick and sometimes I was okay. And this is in the matter of like two hours. So it was very weird. So it was like, and, and just to, you know, for the rest that are here, that's what they do. They have people like Rachel. And I remember her from a long time ago. I actually remember her. She used to try to give business advice. And nobody hired her to be an advisor. She was always on my page criticizing and making stupid comments. This kind of behavior is not going to be tolerated. So we got to get rid of that early. So whoever thinks that when I have a message to impart or I have something to say on my Instagram, on my live, that you're going to come here and disrupt me and make a mockery of yourself, I'm going to get rid of you very quickly. So comments off, not interested in any input. People don't have to stay here if they don't want to. So back to what I was saying, throughout the entire process, it's like every time, you know, somebody was told that I was going to be sick 
or every time somebody was let me just turn my timer on oh, why is it not working yeah every time somebody was told that I was gonna be sick every time somebody was told I was gonna be bankrupt anytime somebody was told I was gonna be this that or, or the third it just wasn't happening it literally was I guess to them confusing as to why of everyone you know I was the one that wasn't coming around wasn't joining wasn't doing any of the above so you know like I was saying I guess originally I feel really happy and I feel finally like I'm I'm being appreciative you know to God and I'm showing respect and honor that I can come and I can publicly say like thank you mother I know there are people that have beliefs outside of Christianity especially people who are spiritual being spiritual and having beliefs that are not mainstream kind of put you in a situation where um I guess you're you're gonna you're gonna lose favor with people people are gonna call you names people are gonna say you're a devil worshiper and and who's the she and then it leaves room for people to like you know open up and like make up lies and whatever the case is and it's like i've always been a good person and my character has spoken for itself you know and i'm just at the point where i'm just like it is what it is you know people get persecuted for their spiritual beliefs all the time so it is what it is i believe in what i believe in but what I'm most proud of is with my personal beliefs, the proof is in the pudding. And, you know, I used to say to myself, if I possibly get somewhere in life where I could look back on this situation and say to God, like, thank God it happened. Like, it's, it was almost like I was like, it was like a bet with God. Like, if I can get to a point where I can say, I see why this had to happen. Thank God it happened. I will be so shocked. And I have gotten to that point. And that's when I knew I came through the situation. Is when I was able to say, thank God this happened. Like, not just, oh my God, it happened and I got through it. But like, thank God. Like, I can see why I was gang stalked. I can see why I went through it. First of all, I'm going to start here. This gang stalking thing is terrifying. And like I've said in so many other videos, it's not something that just happens in Canada. It's not something that just happens in the U.S. I think it's worldwide, especially Central American countries. And I've gone through this before. Um, you know, when I tried, when I was researching and I traced back the origins, it was in Eastern Europe um, that these kind of tactics started. They are very effective because you ostracize somebody from their whole social network. You take people away from the people that they love. You make someone feel like they're crazy. You don't validate what their concerns are. You gaslight them. You take everything from them. And I woke up one night because I feel like I suffered. But I woke up, sorry, one morning. And I was thinking of all the things that were done to me had they been successful culminatively like all of them together that there would be absolutely no way to survive that for a normal person that there would be no way no way i it finally hit me because i thought i suffered and i remember i listened to one reading and they were like they were like you think you're suffering you're not suffering you don't even know what suffering is and a few days ago, it finally hit me like, whoa. So let's just walk down this road for a second. Imagine if someone successfully strips you of your home. How that feels. Like it's hard for people to imagine how traumatic it is to go from having a house to not having a house. And it really hit me because I came ac across a girl's post. She's a nail tech in the States. And she said that her and her family took um, a risk. And her and her uh, then husband, they just had a van. And they moved to LA to start doing celebrity nails out of their van. And she showed what the van looks like. And it was a mattress in the back of the van. 
and they had boxes in the front seat. So whenever they would sleep on the mattress in the back, they put the boxes in the front and then vice versa. When they would drive, they would put the boxes in the back. And I just thought to myself, how crazy that is. So if you look at all the belongings in your house, how much of that you'd have to get rid of in order to be homeless. And just even the fact that like people stand on the street panhandling. Now, one of the things about me, I've been known to just give to homeless people. Like I'll see people and it's not everybody. Some of them I don't even roll my window down for. I just, it's a gut thing. But some of them, I remember there was this one time I saw this girl, young girl. She looked maybe about 20 years old. And I just, I gave her 50 bucks out of my purse. And she was so, so shocked. She was like, oh. She was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. She's like, are you sure? She's like, you don't have to. I was like, yeah. And I was like, please just promise me like, you know, it's not my business what you have to do to get through the day. But don't buy drugs if you can. Not with this. And she's like, no, 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 I promise I won't. And it's like, I could see she was holding back tears because, you know, at that time that I gave to her, this was at the beginning of when all of this was happening to me. I didn't even know yet that this stuff was happening, that I was being monitored or followed. I didn't know any of that yet. But at the time when it happened, it's like, I know I thought she was just grateful for the $50. That's what I thought then. From where I have been and from what I have been through, I I know that it wasn't just gratitude, it was that somebody that she felt seen, that somebody looked at her and almost like validated her suffering, what she was going through. Because her shock to me indicated that people don't take her seriously when she's asking for money. That's what that made me feel in my gut. And from what I went through and seeing how people who knew me were behaving. Let me, let me tell you how crazy it is. So there were times I would leave my cell phone home and I would just take off because I had something important to do and I didn't want to be followed. And whenever I would get somewhere, let's say I went downtown or I went wherever the hell I went, I would ask somebody to use their cell phone and I'm dressed well, I look clean, I look normal and people would be nervous to still let me use their cell phone. And I thought to myself, at first I was like, what the hell is it? And then I thought to myself, you know what, if I were somewhere and someone asked me to use my cell phone, I would be nervous too, because I would be worried if they take my cell phone and run off with it. That's what I would think, to be honest with you. So I was like, okay, I kind of get why they probably feel that way. But if you, as a normal person who's dressed normally and who has normal things going on in your life, like you're not homeless, you're upstanding, all of the, all of the above, if you're dressed that way and someone doesn't want to give you a cell phone, if you can only imagine what it's like to be homeless and to basically feel invisible and to basically feel like no one understands and no one knows and no one's coming to help. I went to donate to a women's shelter of young girls, teenage girls, who got them. I couldn't get diapers because Lord have mercy, diapers are so expensive. I don't even know how people are getting with kids are getting along right now. But anyway, I donated lotions and, you know, Vaselines and like whatever I could for kids, toothbrushes, toothpastes, whatever, like a, a lot of it. And when I went there, the staff were horrendous. Like I could like, honestly, if I were in my ego, I would have taken everything back and just like been like, forget this. I'm going to another shelter. They didn't care that things were being donated. And on top of it, their pantry was empty. When I first spoke to the person uh, in charge of donations, she was freaking out because she's like, I don't know what's going on because we haven't had any donations since COVID. Like, it's like we've been forgotten. And I said to her, well, okay, f what do you prefer? Do you guys want me to write a check or do you want me to give? Or she's like, okay, get, get. and she gave me this long list. And she's like, am I going too fast? This girl was so excited, or this lady, I should say, was so excited that someone was going to give and then it took me a little bit to get around to it like a week or two because you know whatever situation 
And even still, she reached back out and reminded me like, hey, I don't want to be a bother. Just wondering like what day you're going to come and what like they needed it. So they hadn't had donations for the longest time. These girls hadn't had supplies for the longest time. And the staff were so, the staff I dealt with that day had to be, I had to remind her that she's actually of service and that this is not a normal job. You're not a clerk somewhere. You're of service. Like this is young children. It was a, a teen shelter. This is like girls who need things. So it's like, you know, why are you telling me about the day that I'm coming or you can't do this or you can't, who cares? Come get all these boxes. Come get these supplies. This is good news. You know, people need things. So it's like, there again, I have this experience where, and when we were driving in, there were four of the girls right at the entrance and they have these baby faces and they're pushing strollers and some of them have like little babies beside. And it's like, they're so sweet. Like regardless of how they end up in the situation, it doesn't matter. Like they're, you can feel in their energy. They're so innocent and they're so curious about me and they want to come up and say hi and they want to talk and it's just like, these are the kids that don't even know what real life is about and they've already been tossed aside. We're sending money to the Ukraine. We're sending money all over the place. All of these issues are happening. Everybody's complaining about the cost of food. And then there are young kids like that that are completely forgotten, that no one is helping. This is what it's like to be forgotten. This is what it's like to be in our society without resources. This is what it's like when you've been stripped of anything, of everything, and it's almost like you're not a human being anymore. They've taken your humanity away from you. Or through whatever circumstances you've gone through, your humanity has been taken away from you. And this is what it's like. So a lot of people sit in their homes right now, Christmas, December 16th, Christmas approaching, and they, they think about themselves. They think about like, how am I going to pay this bill? Or what's, you know, what am I going to do for Christmas? Or I have a nicer car than this person. And who does this person think they, and all this childish nonsense. But this year, God has something different in mind. People who destroy other people need to know what it's like not to have. People who make a living off of stealing from other people need to know what it's like to not have. And that is the lesson. Those things that you have that you walk around with that you're so proud of that make you feel like you're better than other people. Look down on people. Forget people. In this time, gang stalkers have been turned into the poor. I didn't say the broke, I said the poor, impoverished. I've seen people who gang stalked me getting food from the donation bins, stealing vegetables from inside the store, putting it in the cart, raising the cart high, and walking out with the food they didn't pay for, and then taking bins out of the donation pile at the no frills and shoving it in the back of their car. I've seen people who were making $300,000 a year that act as handlers for other people and that push satanic agendas. I've seen those people using payday loans to survive in desperation, crying because they're losing their assets. God has allowed me to see it for myself. This is what I went through that for. Not just to see what people have to pay, but to see what it feels like when people are in need. It's not a pretty sight. It's not a pretty picture. How is it possible that you're okay with other people going through it, but when it's you, it's desperation. It's terrifying. It's so scary. Not knowing what you're going to do in January. Not knowing what you're going to buy your family for Christmas. People who love materials too much 
who are too materialistic and now have to worry about their basic, basic needs, medication, food, paying for the lights, paying for the roof over their head. This is how God works. The universe rebalances itself. It's outside of all of us. It is outside of all of us. And that is what's happening. So, excuse me, as these videos are suppressed and my engagement is suppressed because people don't want you guys to know the truth because they say whatever they want to say. There's a reason why people had to realize they had to walk away from this gang. If this was back in the day when they had access to hundreds of people, this live would be full of hundreds of people in the comments, laughing, gaslighting, saying, you're crazy, you're crazy, go take meds, this and that. That's what they did to people. When people were speaking out about their experiences, they gaslit those people. Those people who were saying, I am being gang stalked, I'm being abused, someone is tearing my life down. They gaslit those people and every single one of those people who used to be in the comments gaslighting other people, your claims will not be heard. Your prayers will not be heard. No one will care because you need to live the experience that you've put other people through for money. And I always say money is an energy. I don't care how much you have. You can be a billionaire and you can be reduced to a pauper in a second. It is an energy. When God is ready for you, God is ready for you. Everything will be swiped. It does not matter how much you have. It is important that people start understanding that you need to live in the upright. You need to live in the upright. So everybody or a lot of people view God as a man, God the Father. And I do believe that there is a God the Father. I do believe so. But I also believe that there is a God the Mother as well. And I believe the Mother energy is the universe. It's Mother Earth. That is the energy. And, and I'm not the first to say that. I, a lot of cultures believe that. Um, a lot of cultures believe in honoring the earth, in respecting the earth. But it's not just the earth. It's not just animals. It's us. It's everything around us. It's the energy. It's our emotions. All of it. All of it cumulatively comes together to make up one that we are a part of. And we tend not to understand that what we do to the least of us happens to the greatest of us. What happens to people who we don't believe are anything or who we've reduced to be nothing eventually circles back around to us. The magical thing about what's happened to me is people have gotten to see it in real time. Count yourself lucky that you've seen that. Count yourself lucky that you've been able to witness a miracle even though you are on the losing end of it as you should, as you should be. Because I think people truly, it's easy to say something, but until you're on the verge of homelessness, until you're standing on the line of a food bank, you don't truly understand what it feels like to not have anything, what it feels like to literally be impoverished. You, you don't understand what that is. Like the feeling of it, you don't understand it. And let me tell you something that's crazy. The person who has led the charge against me, John Ferreira, still is in delusion, made a fake YouTube page the other day and called it Chief Handler, I Despise the Poor. This is a person who hasn't made any money in a long time. This is a person who is living on God knows what, on favor. This is a person who is in fear for their life at the moment because they haven't been able to bring me in. So the money they were supposed to get from the contract is one thing. That's not coming, but literally their life is in danger because of who they owe. And this is a person who would prefer I don't log in 
or don't log online so they could pretend that I'm dead, that it worked. And still has, this person is the poor. This person's laying flat. This person's not on their knees. They're flat on their stomach. And still talking about, I despise the poor. Well, it would make sense that you would despise yourself because you are the poor. It's like, it's not clicking like not another dollar will be made. Because not only is it a botched job, not only do our people after you, not only are the police onto you, but now the whole point of your operation is so that people don't know what's happened to them or who's paid for it. It's supposed to be anonymity and that has failed. So how are you getting hired again? With me still alive, how are you ever going to get hired again? With me making noise, with me having no fear of you or of your gang or whatever the hell you guys are, a cult is what I call you. How? How's that going to work when people have walked away from you? When you have one Rachel come back in comments, how's that going to work? You're supposed to have an army of 200 people to do what you want them to do. You've fallen apart. Like, how is that supposed to work? It's that type of delusion where someone can literally be going through the very thing that they put other people through and still be in denial. Like, that is crazy. But you know what? This is the part about it. The universe is very, very, very wise, I will say. Wise is the word I'm going to say. If that lesson hasn't been learned, it's going to continue until the lesson is learned. It's going to continue until the lesson is driven home about who the poor is and what it's like to be poor because it's not fun. So people, and I was seeing it from before, people's mass camps that everything was falling apart. Things weren't coming through. It was chaotic. All of it, all of it, all of it has to come down. Every business built on the back of the suffering of other people has to, will, and is coming down. I see the failing businesses everywhere. I see the people who are pompous fighting for a sale. I walk into stores and I see it. The same things that they wanted from me is the same things happening to them. There's no one there. It's crickets. It's crickets. It's crickets. So, everybody is going through it. Everybody's going through it. No money is coming in. But only some of us are being taken care of in those situations. So... Let's continue. As I was saying before, I think we all know the story of God the Father, the Mother, who we've called the Holy Ghost, instead of God the Mother. We've referred to it as the Holy Ghost, um, or we've referred to it as the Mother of Jesus, who's Mary. And then there's the Son, so the, the Father, the Mother, and the Son, and the Son was Jesus. And Jesus came and made a sacrifice and suffered and was persecuted and died on the cross for our sins. And so we were absolved of sin. It was the paying of a karmic debt that we had amassed. We were absolved of our sins and then we were able to move forward to everlasting life. That is... A metaphor that is and it took me this long to understand that that is a metaphor that was a metaphor for what we have to go through when we come into this life but more specifically this was a metaphor for the people who have been binded into situations without their understanding and without their knowing. The people who have tied themselves to a situation through their cooperation and actually just by benefiting, just by benefiting from taking money from this organization. Part of the reason why I'm very watchful, well, I'm, I'm not even going to go into that. 
it is what it is let's move forward from that um that's really the message that i wanted to impart today is the dying um i don't know if it was yesterday's live or the live before where i was talking about dying out of a contract it's a spiritual contract where they bind you to either a person or a situation or a group and this is with or without you knowing about it and it's with or without your permission so a lot of times they call it like married to the game so you come in and you you're around these people actually they, you don't even really have to be around them they use maybe probably an article of your clothing or something you know to do with you and they marry you to a situation and the only way out of that situation is to die out of the situation to die out of the contract the contract is binding on both sides so essentially the person who owns the contract feels like they own you and that's the lesson really it's the parallel between the two stories that once you're in a karmic situation or once you're bound by karma to a situation you have to die out of that situation the old you must die out of that situation and you don't have to physically die you you can spiritually die out of that situation but it's very important how you're reborn. You need to be reborn back into a new situation, into a new reality. Because the dying process is extremely difficult. And this is what has happened with me. This is what's happened with Jesus. This is what's happened with many people. This is what's happened when, this is what happens, sorry, when someone gets baptized, changes their life. And joins a church that's exactly what happens is they have to literally die out of that situation spiritually and be reborn into their new life that's what has to happen with anybody who's been a part of this you need to it's a death and rebirth process on and on and on and on I've constantly talked about the death and rebirth process you cannot leave this situation the same person that you came in. You can die in the situation spiritually, but a rebirth requires a new God, a new family, a new allegiance. And no matter what anybody wants to say, no matter what anybody wants to do, no matter what any jokes people want to have, it is undeniable that I have survived what nobody was supposed to be able to survive. I am not just surviving. I have peace in my heart. I do not have panic. God has gone before me to take care of everything that's been in my way. So I'm still here. And so... I know what people are experiencing because they keep sending these people. Let me tell you something. This is a crazy thing. Every single, and I mean every last person that was sent towards me to love bomb me couldn't help but express their panic about their financial situation. Everyone. Everyone. Looking at me. And a flash of terror across their face like, oh my God, the last couple months have been horrific. Nothing, nothing, no sales. Everyone, even down to stores where the employees were complicit in this nonsense. Every single time, people would look at me and be like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Every single time. When I went to Vegas, there's this girl that they sent towards me to ask me questions. And she opened up to me and was telling me how stressful things were, how bad things were, how she feels like she should be able to make money and she's not sure how she's going to do this and pay for that and whatever. It's everywhere. 
but this is not just from the economy this is not this is not because not everybody out here who's not making money and who's not doing things it's this is not the economy this is literally a result of what god is doing and what's going on in people's lives and so this is why my message for today is what it is people are binded to these situations and they don't know what's going on and i'm pretty sure there's confusion as to like how comes there's a halt to, to our money how comes we're not making money how comes we're not getting paid because people went out and i'm sure with the amount of money that people thought was going to come in and the kind of lifestyle they thought was going to be lived of course i can see how they would be like yeah you know what i can afford to do this and i can afford to do that because it'll be fine as long as we do our job as long as we do our job, it'll be fine. I'm sure they could think that. I'm sure they would think that to count to spend money they don't have and count the 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 chickens before the chicken even lays the egg, before the egg even hatches, before the babies even survive. I could see how that would occur, but that's just not not what's happening, unfortunately. So, this is the best that I can say it. If you're in this situation or you were in this situation and your life is literally like uncertain at this point and, and that's putting it gently, it's uncertain. You don't know how you're going to pay for things. You don't know how you're going to keep going. It's been a struggle. You're coming to your end to the end of your rope. It's about time you walk away from these things. God is always there. I'm not talking about no Satan is God. I'm not talking about lower level entities because that that has not been working lately, has it? That has not. I'm talking specifically to the covens. That has not been working lately, has it? Everything's been backfiring. They're not helping anymore. They have no jurisdiction where God is present. I talk all about God the mother all the time and God the father. And so that makes you... The embody that makes you Jesus essentially. So you have to die on your own cross. You have to face your own karma. You have to say that you're done with this and you have to mean it. And you have to face whatever storms come along with you saying that you're done with it. To the very end, every day. And you walk with God through it, and God will take you through it one step at a time. But you are going to pay for what you did. You're going to pay. It is what it is. Now, for me personally, I don't know what I did to deserve this in my life. I don't think I did anything to deserve it. And I still went through it. So I don't know what people are going to have to go through. And I'm never going to sit here. I'm not one to ever like sugarcoat and tell people like, oh, this is going to be easy Oh, like as long as you trust God. Listen, the only thing I can say is as long as you put your faith in God, you're looking for redemption. I can't even guarantee what's going to happen after the fact. Because there are some people that are just not coming out of this. They're not coming out of this with eternal life. A decision has been made. They just don't deserve anything beyond. Like they're not going into the kingdom of heaven. It's not possible. Nor do they want that. They don't want that either. They don't want to change. So it is what it is, right? It's like a mutual decision. But for those that feel like they're remorseful for what they've been a part of, they don't want to go through this. They don't want to face this. You know, they want to make a change. You can start. You can start, but you can't, you can't continue to live the same life and then ask for forgiveness. You can't continue to do the same things and ask for forgiveness. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. And so I can tell you from the journey that I made, I literally had to hold on to the very end. I had to hold on till it was all done. Faith and trust in God. That the old me would be killed and the new me could be reborn. Or not killed, but well, killed, died, whatever, whichever way you want to put it. But the old me definitely is dead. And the new me is definitely reborn. And I've always felt in service of God, to be honest. I've always felt like if God asked me for something, you know, her wish is my command. But 
truly truly being in service of god and being very vigilant that like so much so that i don't even have plans for myself it's in whichever way you know god deems it necessary and this is the way that i live my life so that is my message for today um i'm gonna post it on youtube with a link in my stories um, and hopefully people that actually need to see this, see this. I'm very confident that eventually people that need to see it will see it. So have a good day.